A lot of people who decide to use Vim either use regular Vim or Neo Vim, but a question I see a lot of people asking is how do they actually differ? So I think a good place to start is how Neo Vim actually came into existence. So Vim originally was authored by Bram Molinar, and this was a clone of Bill Joy's Vi Editor. Specifically, it was based on the source code for the Stevie Editor. Now, NeoVim basically began as a fork of Vim, and this is different from a lot of the other Vim forks because NeoVim doesn't try to be a fundamentally different editor. NeoVim wanted to take what Vim actually was and then be basically the next step along this long editor history because there were things that came before Vi that Vi was based on and before those and before those. So NeoVim's aim is to be the next step along the Vim journey. And the reason why they wanted to do that is because the NeoVim team saw how Bram Molinar was managing the project and how features were being developed and they felt like there was a fundamental flaw in the way that this worked and they felt like they could do it better. Now I'm not saying there is, but this is the way that they felt about the situation. So one of the problems they had with the way that Vim was being managed was with how features actually came into the code base. So if we go and have a look at the official repo for Vim, as we can see, Basically, every single commit that's made to the repo is done by Bram himself. And the reason why it's like this is because Bram basically takes up a benevolent dictator for life situation. So this basically means that he has absolute control over every single feature that actually makes it into the code base. And if he doesn't like the feature, it's just not going to go into the code base. This is how a lot of other projects are managed. Python was like this for many years, and now it's moved over to like a board of directors situation. This does come with a lot of benefits. It means that the project isn't going to have a bunch of different people trying to take the project in different directions, but it does definitely come with some flaws. Now, even though everything committed here is done by Bram, this doesn't mean that he's the only one who actually works on the Vim code base. Vim has a massive developer community, but ultimately Bram is the one responsible for making sure it actually gets migrated into the code base and then gets delivered to the users. Now also, because Vim is such an old project, it makes use of an equally old way to do communication among the developers, with most of the communication happening in the Vim mailing list. Now, this isn't a bad thing, however it is a very different way from the way that a lot of new developers actually work. And from NeoVim's perspective, they wanted to make it much easier to actually onboard new developers. So they've got a lot of documentation that is very easily accessible on how to actually contribute to the NeoVim code base. So they've got things like how to actually merge a Vim patch, what are the good issues to actually start with, how to report problems, the developer guidelines, the information about pull requests, the different stages of the pull request, commit messages, basically everything that you need to know right on the GitHub page for how to actually contribute to the code base. And also NeoVim doesn't make use of a benevolent dictator for life situation, as you can see by the fact that commits are made by tons and tons of different people. As I did say earlier, this does come with some issues. However, it does make people feel like they actually have more control over what actually happens in the code base that they're working on. And along with this, they don't mainly use mailing lists to communicate about the code base. They use things like IRC, Gitter, and the GitHub repo itself to actually communicate about the code. And this is just much more accessible for new users. Now, because of their differences, these projects tend to move at very, very different speeds. So NeoVim is always going to get new features quicker. This is because NeoVim doesn't have a single person that says, okay, is this in my vision for the project? If it's not, it's just not going into the code. NeoVim takes a more community-oriented approach where if the community thinks this is something that is going to be good for the code base, it gets included. This does obviously lead to some problems though, where because they like to experiment more, it can lead to the cutting edge versions of the code base being a bit less stable. This isn't to say that NeoVim is unstable, however if you're making use of the absolute most cutting edge features, there could be some issues there. Whereas with Vim, because it takes a much slower approach, you can make sure that it's going to be absolutely rock solid before it gets released. One example of this slow movement is asynchronous IO. So NeoVim had this basically from the start because this was one of the big issues they actually had with Vim. The fact that this massive, massive editor is a single threaded application and that severely limited the types of plugins you could actually do and severely slowed down how fast the application was going to run. Whereas on the Vim side, 
It took Bram about 15 years to actually include this, and the only reason he decided to include this is because Neo Vim was gaining a lot of popularity, and a lot of people really liked this feature. So he was like, okay, I guess I have to do this finally. So moving on from project management, let's talk a bit about embedded Vim. So there are GUIs that do exist for Vim, things like GVim and MacVim. However, being embeddable isn't really one of the end goals of the Vim editor. Whereas NeoVim actually takes this as a very, very serious goal. And one of its long-term goals on the project's website is to be embeddable everywhere. So what this basically means is enable things like the VS Code NeoVim plugin, where instead of just doing NeoVim emulation, it's actually running full NeoVim in the background. Or things like Fire NVim, where you can actually use NeoVim in your browser and actually edit any sort of text box that exists with a full NeoVim instance. And the reason why they can do this is because the first release of NeoVim was basically just a refactor of Vim, pretty much to take the code base up to their standards of development and make it more maintainable for them, as well as to decouple the UI and the back end. Because in the regular version of Vim, as you can see from the fact that GUIs do exist, there is a way to interact with the back end. However, there is more coupling that exists than does on the NeoVim side. However, this isn't to say that NeoVim is always the perfect choice if you want to embed Vim, because projects like OniVim actually decided to stop using NeoVim and switch over to using Vim because they had some problems with some of the things they were trying to do. However, this is more to do with the fact that OniVim had very specific requirements that didn't really align with what NeoVim is capable to do. Another big difference is in Lua support. So in both Vim and NeoVim, they both support plugins in Lua. However, on the Vim side, Lua is just treated as another one of the plugin languages. Things like Python and other languages like that, you can all write plugins in. However, NeoVim takes it a bit of a different way. NeoVim wants to make Lua a first-class citizen inside of Vim, so what that basically means is if you don't want to write any Vim script inside of your VimRC, you could just do everything in Lua instead. And also when it comes to defaults, NeoVim doesn't intend to be exactly the same as Vim. So if we have a look at this, there's a bunch of things in here that are enabled by default or disabled by default that are different inside of Vim. And the reason why they decided to go with this is because they found that a lot of people just set these settings anyway. Things like say, I think wild menu is enabled by default. Yeah, wild menu is enabled by default. Most people use wild menu, so you might as well just have that be the default setting. Now, if I made this video four years ago, I would actually have a lot more to say because back then, NeoVim and Vim actually had some pretty substantial differences. However, if I showed you vanilla Vim and vanilla NeoVim, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So prior to Vim 8, NeoVim actually had some major advantages, things like the asynchronous, which allowed for multi-threaded plugins, which as I mentioned earlier with modern CPUs is a major, major performance boost. And also it had an embedded terminal. So if you don't know, you can actually open up a terminal instance inside of Vim and inside of NeoVim but this didn't exist inside of regular Vim until Vim 8. So this will let you do things like compile your code or interact with Git without actually having to close your editor. So the only reason that these things actually exist inside of regular Vim is because NeoVim actually exists. When Vim had no competition from other Vim-like editors, there was no reason to add these features because Bram could continue with his vision because that's the only thing that actually exists. But once people have experienced things like asynchronous IO and embedded terminals, obviously they're going to want those inside of their regular Vim experience. So having competition between these editors is absolutely amazing. This is why I actually really like NeoVim and regular Vim. If only one of them existed, there would be no reason for them to just continue becoming better and better editors. They can just... I guess, keep going on the path they've been going and just basically become stale. However, by having that massive competition there, they keep having to one-up each other and become even better editors. So personally, I use NeoVim. One of the reasons is because I prefer the way the project's actually being managed, but also I like the idea of being able to get some of these really interesting cutting edge features that I'd have to wait another five years to get inside of the Vim experience. But if you want to use regular Vim, that's entirely up to you. 
So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andrew, Nathan, Montezar, Chico Bento, Joseph, Peter D, Rode, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek, Mikel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go support my work, them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, to Libra Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.